Triple 100 stat armor, the true endgame desire of most people, but yet so many come short. What's up guys, Frosty here, and today we're going to cover 5 big points that help you acquire a triple 100 stat build of choice, easily and quickly. Today we're going to cover how to actually acquire high stat armor, the numbers on legendary armor to better understand how it actually works to help you hit triple 100 stats, how to essentially speedrun the bonfire bash activity on the EAZ due to an exploit, how to juice up armor on your characters that you haven't even played the event on, and the best way to farm silver leaves for both solo and group play. Alright, so as you all know, Solstice is the new event. Overall, it's kind of bland, but on the flip side, it basically drowns you in high stat armor drops. Play the bonfire bash activity on the EAZ to earn armor drops. And imbuing armor with kindling and silver ash allows you to reroll your armor to hit a guaranteed minimum of 20 in a particular stat of choice. Before you reroll your armor though, be sure to have a ghost mod equipped that is also bumping up another stat. However, you can't stack these two things to get an insane spike in one particular stat of choice. For example, you can't reroll your Solstice armor for recovery while also having a recovery mod on your ghost to focus a piece of armor to have 30 recovery. It doesn't work that way. Next up, let's talk about the best ways to farm silver leaves, which you'll need a lot of to convert into silver ash to do all this. For solo players, double dipping heroic public events on the EDZ is your best bet. For group play, it's kind of funny. The best strat is actually the same as before essentially, even after Bungie shadow nerfed the old previous method, which used to be CP farming the investigation mission. Now you can do the same exact thing under the Ghost Witch Queen mission. Simply play through the mission until the end, where it asks you to acquire Sagira, but don't acquire Sagira. Instead, go to orbit to confirm yourself a checkpoint. Now load up that checkpoint with your friend and have your friend wait in the mission while you change characters, then rejoin your friend's fire team and pick up Segura to complete the mission for 13 to 15 silver leaves. Now just load up the checkpoint on your original character and keep doing this over and over. You'll reach the maximum of 100 silver leaves doing this in no time. Now that you're capped on silver leaves, jump into the bonfire bash to convert them into silver ash. There's a cheese you can do that makes this mission go insanely fast. Shout out to Cheese Forever for this strat. What you want to do is load in on a behemoth titan and pick up an orb, but don't throw it into the bonfire. Instead, run physically at the bonfire and use your Howl of the Storm ability to generate a wall of ice right alongside the edge of it. Doing this will count as multiple orb throws if you do it right. Then just go ahead and break each crystal slowly with a kinetic weapon ideally, and each one of the crystals should also count as an orb being thrown at the bonfire. If you do this with a team, you will burn through this mission insanely fast, but even just one person doing it can essentially cut the duration of the mission in half or less, because remember the max is 20 orbs before the final boss spawns in. So now you should be looking pretty good on armor to reroll and silver ash. Next let's talk briefly about the way high stat armor works and I'll try to be as quick and straightforward with this as possible. So keep in mind the math explained here is legendary armor before it's masterwork to 10 without any mods equipped. First of all you have 6 main stats on a legendary piece of armor. These stats are broken up into 2 different categories. The first is mobility, resilience and recovery. The second is discipline, intellect and strength. A legendary item cannot roll with more than 68 total stats and it cannot roll with more than 34 total stats in one of its categories. For example, you could not have a piece of armor with 30 recovery and 20 mobility because that would be exceeding the first category's limits, but you could have 30 recovery and either 20 discipline, intellect, or strength. So I'm assuming you've seen some crazy armor with big spikes in two different stats. You'll notice you'll never see those big spikes in the same categories. This is because each category is limited to 34 like I said earlier. There are some pieces of blue armor that are an exception to this rule, but we're talking about legendary armor here. Knowing this information is extremely helpful for trying to acquire armor with the stats you want for your build. So let's take my warlock for example. I want to get high res, recovery, and discipline for one of my builds. Well, all I need to do is reroll a piece of solstice armor with recovery while also having a res mod on my ghost. What this will do is give me a piece of armor that is guaranteed to have the first category essentially taken care of and also allows me to avoid points in mobility, which is a stat that I don't value. So again, remember the armor can't roll with more than 34 stats in a single category, and I'm forcing a minimum of 30 here between the recovery and the res. This also allows the armor to potentially get a big spike in one of the second category stats. I personally always focus armor for either recovery or intellect because those are the two most expensive stats to put on a piece of armor. Recovery mods cost 4, and intellect mods cost 5, 
while mobility, resilience, discipline, and strength mods all only cost 3 energy each. Next let's talk about how you can throw a build together without staying up late at night with a calculator crunching numbers going through your vault manually. I would recommend Destiny Item Manager and D2ArmorPicker.com for this. With a D2 Armor Picker, you can essentially map out your builds on a spreadsheet because it does all the number crunching for you by showing you what you have and what you're capable of putting together. This is of course assuming that you've saved up some high stat armor for the website to actually pull data from because it would be hard for it to calculate a build from things that don't exist. Lastly, let's cover armor rerolling for characters you don't plan on playing on for for the duration of the Solstice event. Essentially what you can do here is swap armor over to a character that you have fully kindled the armor on and reroll that other character's armor. So you can essentially bypass the need to do all 24 challenges on your other characters by just simply swapping them over to your main character that you've already kindled the full set of armor on. For example, my warlock is fully kindled so I can just swap some of my hunter's armor over to him and he can just juice it up. The only thing you can't do if you decide to follow this approach is you won't be able to put the glow on your solstice armor. But if you don't care about that and you only want the easy high stat armor, this is a good way to condense your grind. Anyways, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and good luck making your triple 100 stat builds during this year's summer solstice event. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay frosty.